Hey everybody, we're going to tie a Juju Emerger today. Uh, this is a little Mayfly Emerger pattern. I'm going to tie an olive uh, olive brown colored version, and it's tied on a Tiemco 101. And I'm going to we're tying a size 18 today. Uh, I'm going to start with some. This is uh, dark brown 16 knot Vivas. 14 knot works fine. I still have lots of the 16 knot. It's in my all, all my bags, so that's what I use. And I'm going to start this thread a couple eye lengths back from the hook eye, and just trim that tag end out. And I'll bring a thread base all the way back to the bend of the hook, and that's where I'm going to tie my tails in. So I'm going to use Mayfly tails, you know, tailing fibers, micro fibbits, etc., uh, whatever brand name you like. I'm going to take two of these. And these are pretty fine little filaments. I'm going to grab two of them and cut them out of the clump. And one thing I like to do is make sure that their tips are even. Um, and those look pretty, pretty even. Let me give them a little better eyeball here. There we go. So I've got these two the same length. I'm going to measure them about a shank length, maybe just a skosh longer. Butt them together in my fingers. And uh, this is the same trick that I used to tie on an RS2 tail. I'm going to hold the tips. That's what's in my fingertips there. Um, and that's my material hand. From the back of the vise, um, I'm pointing the butt ends at my uh, opposite shoulder. So I'm holding these in my right hand and pointing the butt ends at my left shoulder. Um, now keep in mind I tie left handed so if you're right handed you'll be doing that opposite. But I'm angling these across the top of the hook. You can see the butt ends here coming away from from the hook. And I'm going to bring the thread over them and let that roll them to the top. And I'll get a couple turns there. Just one in front of the other. And then I'll lift the tails so they're tied in at the bend there. Um, and I usually go just two or three turns forward. Then I'll use my thumbnail to kind of lift and separate those two tails like so and now to further separate them um, you could use a tag end of the thread um, and pull that up up between sort of like I've done on the RS2 in my uh, basic tying book um, but what I want to do here is I'm going to show you a figure eight maneuver so my thread is hanging up here toward the hook point it's got three turns in front of the tie down and I'm going to come back and come up under the near tail and down around the hook. And I'm not really pulling terribly hard here. I'm going to kind of let off the tension there and then come over the far tail. So let me turn this just a bit and you can follow that path of that thread. So I just made a figure eight and as I tighten that, you can see that'll separate the tails. Uh, so I want to do that where I can see it a little better. Get a couple turns on there and now I've got a nice widely spread tail. So that figure eight turn of thread there. I'm going to bring my thread forward over the butt ends. I don't want to cut the butt ends off early because I want to use them to help build the underbody. I do want to keep them square on the hook. Right up to where I started and I can trim those tails out. Now in the case of the olive brown version, I'm going to take two strands of olive super hair. This is a juju emerger, so of course it's got super hair in it. I'm going to take two strands of the olive super hair and one strand of brown. Line them all up next to each other. I'll kind of just pull them between my fingers. You can see that'll take some of the some of the wave out of them. Although the wave's not a huge deal, it just makes it a little easier to handle. And I'll cut all three three ends to the same length. Now I'm going to catch these on the near side of the hook and draw them down to length. And I'm going to wrap back over them all the way back just short of the tail. I don't want to disrupt the tail. And then I'll come forward again. Now on an 18 you can build a bit of a taper. So um, I can work this thread back and forth here on the front half of this abdomen just a bit. And again this is 16 out thread so it doesn't take much but just a slight thin taper to that body. And I'm going to pull my super hair up and you can see my super hair is lined up where it's olive olive brown. Um, how it lines up doesn't make a huge difference. It's just interesting to know. Um, that way you can keep it that way during the rest of the fly. So I'm going to bring this down and around, come around my hook point, 
and I'm going to tuck this neck strap in front. Now very commonly on that first turn those will start to spread out if you take your fingernail and push them back together. As you wrap, you can butt those together. And I'm just going to continue to wrap forward. One turn right in front of the other. Right up to the end of the abdomen. And I'll tie that off with a couple of turns. Actually several turns. Super hair is um, not a good material to break your thread when you tie off. It just wants to explode, so um, I'm always a little extra cautious there. Then I can cut that super hair off there. So we've got that nicely segmented body, just what we're, what we're hoping for there. All right, now I'm going to begin with the thorax. So I'm going to take some olive brown super fine dubbing and just a tiny little pinch of this. It's not going to take much here. Dub this down on the thread very tightly, up fairly close to the hook. And I'm going to dub this. Now this dubbing for the start of the thorax isn't going to come off the, the abdomen. It's going to all be on the front edge here. So I'm just going to build a ball here. About like so. And as I run out, I'll run the thread right up to the hook eye and back to the front edge of that ball. So we've just built that little ball. Now I'm going to come in and put the legs in. And the legs are just India hen back or Cock de Leon hen. Um, I've got a pretty nice little hen back right here, so I'm going to use this. So I'm going to take my hen feather here, and I'm going to divide or pull out a clump, a fairly good sized clump of fibers, and square their tips like so. I'll peel those off the feather. And then I'll come in and I'm just going to use my scissor tips to divide that clump in half. You can kind of see what I've done there. Now I'll do it where I can see it. There we go. Like so. So they're just split in my fingers into two separate bunches. I'm going to place these on either side. And these are my threads hanging just in front of that ball of, th of dubbing. I'm going to measure these legs back just about to the point of the hook. And then I'll pinch them in place there. And I'll come around with a loose turn and tighten it down and wrap right back up against the front edge of that nub. And that'll spread those legs out to either side. Um, now I don't really want them kind of coming down around the bottom of the fly. I want them out on the side so you can sort of manipulate them at this point. We can't call that manual distribution. That's exactly what we want there is nice widespread legs. Now I'm going to pull all these butt ends up and again with my fine tip scissors come in and cut those out. I don't want those stubs to stick any further than the, than the hook eye. Then I can wrap over those butt ends. Now I'm going to come in with a pair of CDC feathers and what I'll do here is I'm going to stack them one on top of the other. Um, just like you really just like you would hackle feathers. There's two feathers there. And I'll sort of separate the tip into a neat little bundle like so. I'm going to take and lay this in on top. Now you can do a couple different things here. Since I've got the whole feather, um, I actually I'll show you both ways. Um, since I've got the whole feather here, I can kind of leave this long and pinch this down and tie it down and then draw that down to length into a short little stub like so. Um, or, an alternative method, is once you've tied that first fly, um, you know, you've cut that off and you've, you're left with what equates to that. Um, at that point I can take and just cut those center stems out, and then I'll take the remaining fibers and pull them up into a little tuft, and I can cut that to length. Um, so what I'll do, and I'll just go ahead and continue on from here, but I'm going to cut that off fairly square, as square as I can manage, like so. So I've just got a little tuft of those fibers, and I'm going to lay that in on top, pinch it in place, and catch it with a couple of turns. And I'm fairly happy with the length right there. If I, if I wanted it a little shorter, I could just pull on the butt ends to, to shorten it down. I'm going to lift those up and trim those butts out. 
just a couple turns to anchor those butt ends down. Now I'm going to take three strands of white floral fiber. You got four there, yep. And with these three strands, I'm going to take, and my thread is hanging up here behind the hook eye. Um, if I take these three strands in behind the thread and grab the front end, I can lift them up under the thread. That's an easy way to catch them. So I'm going to catch them there, and then I'm going to wrap back up to the base of the wing over one half along the far side. And then I'll pull the, pull the near side back and catch it in place with a couple of turns so that those are on either side of the wing there. Now I'll come in with just another little touch of this olive brown superfine dubbing. It's not going to take much. You can see the, the bulk that we need there is already built. We're just sort of coloring this in. So I'm going to start this dubbing behind the eye and work up that slope right up to the base of the wing. Finish off that thorax and I can come forward and finish just behind the hook eye with bare thread. Whip finish my thread there. Trim it out. And then these floral fiber strands, I'm going to trim just a little proud of the wing, so they're a little extra long. There's some foreign object in my dubbing there. I'm going to get rid of him. I don't know what that is. And there is our Juju Emerger. Um, cool little, uh, think of it as an RS2 alternative um, that's a little more versatile. I can fish this fly as a nymph with the indicator split shot, etc., along with something else. Um, or I can fish it as a dry up on the surface. And that little bit of floral fiber on top, you can see how shiny that stuff is, um, really makes that fly show up on the surface um, a lot better than just that short little CDC wing would. Um, and again, that's a, the same reason for those split tails as, as a, the dry fly use to support the bend of the hook. Um, really versatile little fly. Fish it dry, fish it wet, um, anywhere in between in the water column. I tie it in black, I tie it in brown, olive, uh, what else, black, brown, olive gray, like an RS2. Uh, makes perfect sense. Uh, just a sort of uh, uh, something to have. Uh, variation on the theme that you're not throwing the same thing as everybody else which has always been one of my big things is the last thing I want to do is be throwing the same fly as everybody else and this juju is certainly a different uh, different take on the matter so uh, twist a few of those up see what you think I hope you enjoy it thanks for watching uh, come back soon there'll be some more before too long take care